The fact that we know a lot about the horticultural performance of our most adopted varieties is just not random. We know a lot about pretty much each variety that we grow in California because they have been carefully evaluated by researchers from the University of California since the 70s, thanks to the support of our industry. And building from that strong foundation, we're here today to learn a bit more about those new varieties that are or may be available soon in our industry. Hi, my name is Luke Milliron. I'm an orchard farm advisor in the North Sac Valley, Butte Glen and Tehama counties. The purpose of the almond variety trial is to evaluate new almond varieties and determine if they hold potential promise or peril before they are widely planted by growers. The last thing we want is for growers to become the researchers and plant something sexy and new that ends up performing poorly. As Sebastian noted, new almond varieties have been evaluated by UC researchers with generous support from the almond board since the 1970s. And today, we will be discussing the third generation of these trials. There are three trial sites in this latest generation. One down in Chowchilla, one up in Chico, and the one in Salida that we'll be touring today. We collect boatloads of data each year at these three trial sites to evaluate these varieties for you. We look at bloom dynamics, disease incidence, hole split dynamics, yield, yield efficiency, canopy size, kernel quality, and defects, as well as the ease of shaking. I want to pause to explain the key measurement of yield efficiency. Yield efficiency is a smarter way of comparing varieties than yield alone. This efficiency tells you how well a tree was able to convert its canopy size into yield. Yield efficiency is calculated by taking the percentage of the orchard floor shaded by the canopy of the tree at midday, a measure termed photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR, and dividing that percentage by the tree's yield. They say it takes 20 years to prove a variety. If that's true, we're still under halfway there here in the ninth leaf. In addition, no variety will ever be perfect. However, the varieties and selections covered today all offer some exciting advantages. My key variety selection advice is always to first look at which varieties you farm that have been the most profitable over time. However, if you have some appetite for risk, we hope you will learn more about the varieties and selections we reviewed today. Hello, I'm Roger Duncan, Pomology Farm Advisor with the University of California Cooperative Extension based in Stanislaw County. So now we'd like to highlight a few of the most promising varieties and experimental selections from these three regional trials. My name is Phoebe Gordon. I'm the Orchard Systems Advisor for Madera and Merced Counties with UC Cooperative Extension and I collect data at the southernmost variety trial site in Chowchilla. I'm standing today in front of Urizani. It is a new USDA release, and so because it is a public variety, it's available at all nurseries. It is a self-fertile variety like the other USDA varieties. It has higher than average yields, and it has a very high yield efficiency because it is a somewhat smaller tree. Because it's a somewhat smaller tree, it would do well on a high vigor rootstock or planted at a closer spacing. It does have a somewhat drooping architecture as well. It has an excellent quality kernel, similar in color and size and shape to nonpareil. It has a soft, smooth, well-sealed shell. On average, it blooms two days after and harvests three days before nonpareil. It does shake very well and it's mildly susceptible to bacterial blast. Well, this is Aldrich, one of the most popular current pollinizers for nonpareil. Aldrich has good consistent yields in all of our three regional trials very upright tree architecture, which potentially leads to scaffold breakage problems if the trees are not trained correctly in the beginning. The kernel is small to medium in size uh, with a slightly wrinkled surface, and the shell is soft with a good shell seal. Aldrich consistently has very dense bloom, and it overlaps extremely well with nonpareil, starting right with nonpareil and ending when nonpareil ends. 
Harvest is about 21 days after nonpareil, and it generally shakes very well. One of the interesting things that we have seen with Aldrich in this location is that in our leaf samples, we are seeing lower than average nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, zinc, and manganese, uh, but higher chloride and sodium. So this variety here is Booth. It is a seedling collected in Glen County and it's proprietary to Birchall Nursery. It's not self-fertile, which means it will need a pollinator. So far, it's the fourth highest cumulative yielder at all three sites. As a tree, it's fairly large with a semi-spreading habit, similar to nonpareil. The kernels are medium size and they're plump and wrinkled. The shell itself is soft, semi-rough with a bit of open suture. It blooms very well with nonpareil. It harvests 12 days later. It shakes well, and so far we don't really seem to have any particular disease concerns, but it does in some years have a high rate of doubling, but it does seem to be calming down as the trees are maturing. Jeanette is a chance seedling from Fowler Nursery. It is not self-fertile, and yields have been very good in Madeira and Butte, but really below average so far in the Stanislaw County trial. The tree is a grower-friendly, semi-upright canopy, a um, medium-sized tree. The uh, kernel is small and plump, slightly wrinkled, and similar to a butte mission. It is a soft shell, mostly well-sealed. It has a very dense bloom, and it blooms right with nonpareil. Harvest is about 24 days after nonpareil. Jeanette shakes well, and we have not seen any particular insect or disease issues with Jeanette. So the variety we're looking at right now is nonpareil. It is still the gold standard for our California almond industry since its introduction in 1879. It's the highest cumulative yielder of all varieties on average across all sites through the first six harvests. So the shell is soft with a poor seal. It's easily shelled by hand and it's good for the in-shell market. The kernel itself is large, light colored and sweet and it commands top prices in today's market. The tree itself is large and semi-spreading. It's an early bloomer, it blooms around February 18th, and it's an early harvester. It shakes well. With the exception of whole rot, it is relatively disease tolerant, and it's not self-fertile, so it needs a perfect pollinizer. Now we're standing next to Durango. Uh, Durango was originally a chance seedling and is now proprietary to Fowler Nursery. Durango is not self-fertile, so we would consider this as a pollinizer for nonpareil. Durango has a medium to large size kernel and medium color and is slightly wrinkled. The shell is smooth and semi-soft, but it has a good seal. Uh, the tree itself is uh, semi-upright and has a fairly sparse canopy. It blooms about one day after nonpareil and it harvests about 25 days later. Durango shakes well and we haven't seen any particular insect or disease problems with this variety. We're looking at 117-9103. This is a variety we're very excited about from the USD breeding program. In 2021, it was the highest yielding variety in all three locations. It's self-fertile, so it can be planted in a solid block. Its cumulative yield on average across all harvests is second behind nonpareil. The kernel is medium sized, excellent quality and light color. The tree itself is semi-upright. It has an easy to farm growth habit. It blooms three days later than nonpareil, harvest seven days before, which could extend the harvest season. It shakes very well, and so far it seems to have very few insect and disease problems. The holes do split on both sides, which speeds the whole split drying process. Unfortunately, it's not available right now. It is being cleaned up for release, and hopefully in 2024. As with all public breeding programs, this variety will be available at all nurseries when released. The Kester variety was released from the University of California in 2019. Kester is not self-fertile, so it would still need a pollinizer such as nonpareil or butte. It is better than average yield, and it has showed good consistent yields in our previous regional trials as well. It's a large, fairly spreading canopy. Kernel is small to medium size, ovate and slightly wrinkled. The shell is smooth and well sealed. 
Kester blooms about four days after nonpareil, so you would need another variety to cover the early nonpareil bloom, or maybe Kester is best suited as a butte pollinizer. Harvest for Kester is about five days after nonpareil. It has a variable shake. Kester may be best suited as a replacement for Padre, but it harvests too early to be harvested together with butte. So this variety is UCD 1820. It is a variety from the UC Davis breeding program led by Tom Graziel. It may be self-fertile. Tests are ongoing to, to look at this. It's a consistently high yielder. It has a long, narrow kernel that's medium in color and lightly wrinkled. It has a smooth, well-sealed shell. The tree architecture is fairly spreading. It blooms one day after nonpareil and it harvests a full month afterwards. It shakes well, it has very little hole rot, however it does have higher than average doubles in some years. Well, now we can talk about the Eddie variety. Eddie is a chance seedling, originally from Bright's Nursery, but now it is proprietary to Birchall Nursery. Eddie has only had average yield in these trials, but it is a very attractive kernel, light colored, premium quality, very similar to nonpareil in appearance, but larger. It has a paper shell with an open suture and is easily shelled by hand. The tree architecture of Eddie is very similar in size and shape to nonpareil. Eddie blooms about one day before nonpareil and harvests about two days prior to nonpareil. It has an excellent shake, uh, but is susceptible to bacterial blast and similar hole rot and navel orange worm susceptibility as nonpareil. UCD 8160 is an experimental selection from UC Davis. It is self-fertile. Yield per acre has been below average so far in these trials. However, 8160 has the highest yield efficiency of all varieties we've been looking at, uh, which means that it has a higher yield per unit of canopy. It has a small, very weepy tree architecture, uh, but it is well suited for high density plantings. It is a large, slightly wrinkled, non-pareil shaped kernel the shell is soft and well sealed. It blooms right with nonpareil and harvests about 26 days later. It has an average shake, it has some hole rot, and we've seen a lot of doubles and some creases in the kernels, and it may limit the use of this selection. This variety is Bennett Hickman. It's a chance seedling from East Stanislaus County and is proprietary to Duarte Nursery. It's not self fertile, which means that it will need a pollinator. It's a good yielder with an excellent quality kernel that's large and light in color. The shell is a paper shell, and so it has an open suture similar to nonpareil. The tree size and shape are similar to nonpareil, and it also has a similar bloom time with nonpareil. It harvests 11 days later, and it shakes well. It does seem to be susceptible to bacterial blast and navel orange worm damage. And there does seem to be some sort of a bud disorder in newer plantings that looks similar to bud failure, but we don't fully understand what the issue is yet. However, we have not seen it in the variety trial. So that was a brief summary of some of the better performing varieties in our current variety trial. We are currently planning a new round of regional almond variety trials to be planted in Butte, Stanislaw, and Kern counties in the fall of 2022. Like the current set of trials, the new trials will include about 30 up-and-coming varieties and experimental selections. Finally, for the full results on all 30 varieties, visit fruitsandnuts.ucdavis.edu forward slash resource reports. You can also find a fabulous Amund Board resource by doing a Google search for Amund Orchard Development. And as always, you can find lots of great information at amunds.com.